Hello. Hello, Donna. How are you, my dear? I am doing great, Ridgely. I, I, how could I not be at my favorite month or hour of the month? <laughs> I am so happy. And I know you recently just got back from a trip. I how did. Was... Please pardon my mess, everyone. My suitcase is sitting here. I've been home for two nights, but I haven't unpacked it yet. Um, I'm, I'm just taking things out as I need them. Eventually, it will get unpacked. <laughs> Here's my groove color drink, just saying. Cheers. I, I can't say the same thing, but it will keep me groovy for sure. <laughs> so I got the story for you. It's hilarious. So we're talking about anticipation and discovery, right? Yeah. And today is my beautiful wife, Kathy's birthday. Happy birthday, and, Kathy. Yes, indeed. Um, and she, of course, uh, anticipated that I would have done absolutely nothing for her birthday at this point, um, which was, as of an hour ago, 100% true. Okay, so she even went so far as to communicate it to someone who communicated it to me that she had already said, I know what he's done for my birthday. Hmm, <laughs> zero sign, right? So, but I had a plan. My plan was I had a one hour break right before our call here today for one hour. And I was going to literally put on my running shoes, which are still on my feet, running shoes. And I was going to have my knee braces on to make sure that I could make it as far as I needed to make it running. And I was going to knee brace right here. And <laughs> I was going to run to the bank pull out cash because she manages our finances and she would see something on a credit card. Mm -hmm. So I'd pull out cash, then run to the target to pick up a card, got to the target, then run and a clock because she wanted to have a nice outdoor clock because our old one broke, but that's not enough. So you got to do something a little bit better than that. So then run to Talbot's and get a gift card a recommendation by my daughters, um, because that way I can say something really clever like, hey, I wanted to, you to get something that you really wanted, so I got you a Talbot's card. Oh, and if you'd like me to come help pick it out with you, I'd be delighted and gain major brownie points, right? So in the last hour, <laughs> I, I ran to Bank of America, ran to the Target, ran to Talbot's, ran home. And that's why you see the rivulets of sweat still coming off of my face because I anticipated that it would take me less than an hour. It did by one minute. So I walked in the door one minute before the call, dripping with sweat, going, okay, how am I going to pull this together and make this make sense out of things? 
And then the topic is anticipation and discovery. What do we discover? Kind of fun, right? <laughs> it is. That's a, that is incredibly energetic of you. And knowing that you only had an hour and you still decided to make that hour so damn productive in two different ways, um, that's impressive. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing. The, the ladies at the top said, would you like me to wrap this and put it in a little bow? I said, I would, but I don't have time. I've got a call. I've got to run. <laughs> And when I say I got to run, I mean, I really do got to run, like run, 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 run all the way back home. Um, I love that. I also love the subtle nature of you taking off your your running shoes and your knee brace there. You're, you're just sort of stripping below view right now. <laughs> I feel much better without my running shoes and my knee braces on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now I'm ready to just relax into a beautiful call with my amazing friend, Donna Fox and and. Uh, See what we can discover. Nice. On this call. So what did you discover while you were in Florida? I want to know when you're in my state. Oh, we had a very, very productive trip in in a multiple uh, facets. Um, I uh, So when I first got there, we sort of hit the ground running, getting set up for our mastermind event. It was the Collective Mastermind's first in-person meeting. So Thursday, I, I arrived on Wednesday night. Thursday was a setup day, getting the room ready. Friday, everyone arrived. Uh, we had two days of mastermind and then a fun day on Sunday, um, it, it, which rolled immediately into a long Monday meeting day with uh, a new advertising firm we're hiring. Uh, we also had a big long meeting on Wednesday of the week uh, with our new lead developer for Groove.ai software, where we went over the development plan. So um, this might be the first that it's been said live that development has begun on the Groove.ai software. Uh, so it was an incredible week in terms of productivity, like in a way that the, the networking connections from the collective mastermind and then um, the, the great meetings that happened because I was in the area and we could connect on a face-to-face -face level um, that, that, what I discovered was it really makes a difference in, in terms of the speed and flexibility of planning something uh, mm -hmm. to get some face time in. So that was my discovery. I also discovered loads of beautiful time with my best friends, Mike Filsame and Michelle Filsame. Uh, so uh, not only was the, the business side nurtured on that trip, but the emotional relationship side of it was well nurtured as well. You know, let's talk about this anticipation from the perspective of this real scenario. We both have a scenario. You just came back from Florida and I just came back from being a lunatic uh, <laughs> running down the streets of Pensacola to try to take care of Kathy's birthday. Um, and, and it sets itself up for, you know, think about like your anticipation of the event that just happened. Like what thoughts were going through your mind? And then I want to ask about what about the anticipation of the people who are coming to the to the mastermind and the different perspective? Because it's the same mastermind, but from a very different place. What were you anticipating before that event happened? Yeah, uh, fascinatingly. Uh, nothing at all to do with the content delivered at the mastermind. That was the least of my worries. Uh, everything that I was thinking about and anticipating was the, the technological and systems aspects of pulling it off. I was very much in operations mode. Uh, mm -hmm. So all of my anticipation were things like thinking about microphones and whether or not we had enough batteries and the camera equipment being in place and the, the setup being correct. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to, to even really anticipate meeting the collective members in person for the first time. So it was a, a delight and a surprise for me uh, to realize that I already felt close and connected and intimate with a group of people that I've been coaching for uh, to almost three months now. You know, what's interesting is it ties right into the discovery piece because I, um, in prep, I did do some prep preparing for this call, by the way, as usual. Of course I you did. Got my small dictionary. This thing weighs like 25 pounds, right? And 
yes, you may not have uh, anticipated a lot, but in the discovery side, in under the on de the definition of discover, the first definition is to be the first to find out, see, or know about. And that's what happened to you. You suddenly were the first to find, oh, wow, look at all this. Look at these new people. Look at all whatever. So it went from the anticipation side to the discovery side. Mm -hmm. Fun, right? And and I love to to learn the existence of, to realize. Hmm. There you go. So what do you think the people that were coming to the mastermind were anticipating? Well, for them, I am I am certain that they were anticipating what the content they'd be given. They imagined all sorts of scenarios uh, about what it might be like to meet people, to be in the room, to learn from experts, to have conversations. Uh, I know for a fact, one of the mastermind members was anticipating even being a roommate with someone else. Like they agreed to room together and and that was that became a thing because it's brave to decide that you're going to room with someone who's in another program with you that you haven't met before. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, again, similarly, a whole mix of things that I'm sure were they were anticipating and and maybe the least of which was any doubts or fears or anxiety about the content they'd get that weekend. You know, I, I just well, the, one of the reasons why anticipation fascinates me is because I believe that we spend a lot of time anticipating things mm -hmm. a lot. Like, for example, not to be weird, but as I was running, I was thinking about this. I have this clock and it's going to go on the wall outside to replace the one that is currently not working. And when I, every time I approach the house, I'm anticipating a certain time is on that clock. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, I've done this. It's probably around. And I'm making that decision about something that I think is about to happen. And right after that, I go into discovery. That's why these two are uh, linked that, that, wow, was I right? Was I wrong? Was I this? Was I that? So what do you think about how much time we spend in anticipation and is that from your perspective good bad otherwise neutral what uh so great great question um i'm inclined to say neutral just because i'm inclined to say that things are neutral not good or bad so i'll answer that question first um the fact that we spend a lot of time anticipating things is probably a pretty good survival mechanism that we had to develop to be able to imagine, because that's what anticipation is, imagine all the possible scenarios and options and outcomes for any given planned path. So I think it's pretty darn important, actually, that we have the ability to anticipate things. Uh, similarly, I have heard that our level of excitement about something. So we might anticipate going to the prom or our wedding day uh, is often linked to anticipating telling the story of the good time that we had at the prom or on our wedding day. So there's like a double level of anticipation. We're anticipating the actual event, but then the continued stories and goodwill and joy that an event brings us. Uh, what a wonderful way to experience future joy now. Mm -hmm. Again, I think I'm leaning towards the side of anticipation might be a good thing if I were inclined to call something good. Um, well, listen to what the my buddy Webster has to say on, on part one, because there's five different definitions of anticipation, all worthy of commentary. The first one is the act of taking up, placing, or considering something before the proper time in natural order. Mm -hmm. that's what we do right we're forecasting yeah. something we're putting it out there and interestingly um side by side with that anticipation is our friend fear future yes. events already real right future events already real is also a form of anticipating something that may or may not be true may or not be happening i love the way you look at anticipation as the anticipation of a wedding, the anticipation of a prom, the anticipation of a, of a thing, the anticipation that my wife does not feel about the fact that I'm going to do something really cool for her birthday tonight. <laughs> she has she has three spiritual meetings back to back, six, six, thirty seven. 
But at 7.30, she's done. And she doesn't know that I will have taken care of upstairs. And then she's going to walk in and have a... <laughs> right? <laughs> in that sense, which is really cool. So also it said, uh, this is really interesting. Foretaste, foreknowledge, expectation, previous view of, a, of or impression of what is to happen and afterward. Well, I think this is a very interesting thing expectation versus anticipation. What do you think about that? Because expectation, I think, causes a lot of heartache. And and that's exactly where I was about to go. Like, you, you're right. I take a very positive, I'm a really positive yeah. person. It's all rainbows and sunshine around me. Um, so I took a very positive approach to the idea of anticipation, leaning towards, I think it's a good thing. However, you know, if, with anything, which is why I'm not inclined to say thing is a good thing or a bad thing, there's too much or what you anticipate. Because anticipation really is using your imagination, is using your imagination to think about potential outcomes. And you can use your imagination powers for good or for bad. And that's what fear is when you start to stress and worry and fear. And that is you anticipating having a bad story to tell about the outcome of something in the future. It's all the same things, but using your powers for evil, if you will. Yeah, and, and to talk, let's talk about expectations, because I found that I was not expecting, <laughs> to use a word, that anticipation, one of the definitions would be expectation, because I kind of see those as a little bit different. Expectation is a much more loaded word for me than anticipation. Anticipation feels lighter and more full of possibilities, where expectation feels heavier and more full of something is supposed to be a particular way, and I'm gonna I I hold that in my space. I I agree. I feel that as well. Yes. And it and it's one of those. Um, it's almost like in the society that we live today expectations cause a lot of anguish they it cause a lot managed right yeah i mean and there's so many of them there's just so many oh it's supposed to be like this it's supposed to be like that it's supposed to be that supposed to be thing causes people a lot of pain as opposed to hey let's discover go into the discovery phase and f see what happens be open to the possibilities what do you think about that? I, I especially am concerned about expectations that are created among our youth. Oh, yeah. I, no, I agree. I agree that expectations create a, a weight. Um, ex expectations are you know, exceeded or not. Uh, and... It, it's often said that people feel the negative much more powerfully than a positive in their lives for longer and for deeper than a positive. So that may be why expectation tends to have more weight to it because when that expectation, the, this is, this is what I am certain the outcome will be, mm -hmm. which is, is sort of what you're saying with an expectation, or this is what is most likely to be the outcome. Um, when you're not meeting that, there's there's definitely a sense of, of disappointment or lost. I do feel like anticipation is a little more open. Yeah, and, and, and it's also... Um... Magic shoe fairy just delivered shoes to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's something to discover. What do those shoes look like? That's right. I, I, I uh, in, in my world, I discover new clothes and shoes and such all the time because I don't buy any of them. They just show up. They show up. <laughs> hey, I saw these. I thought you might like them. Oh, I guess that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, how? But I do have a question. How many pairs of red swim trunks does a human being need? <laughs> um, clearly one for every day in the summer. So that's about 90. <sighs> I'm telling you, I think I have about 90. Maybe yeah. not quite 90, but it's a, it's a very high number. I can tell you that. Long ones, short ones, skinny ones, fat ones, you know, ones that dry really fast, ones that don't dry really fast is like a whole thing. 
anyway. I am, I am a complete advocate and supporter of buy more clothes so you do laundry less. So, so you do laundry less? Yes. <laughs> Ask me how many pairs of black yoga pants I own. How many pairs of black yoga pants do you own, Don uh, not Not triple digits, but <laughs> probably, in all seriousness, probably 20 pairs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do with that exactly. So here's an example that I was just thinking about. Uh, as I was running back, literally running down the road, carrying this box with this other box on top of it, running, trying running. to get here in time for this call, <laughs> like a dingbat. <laughs> when you look at a box like this, it almost always looks like jewelry, right? It looks like a jewelry box. Somebody is expecting or anticipating. Now, are they expecting that it's jewelry or are they anticipating that it's jewelry? What do you think? I think that is dependent on circumstances or I might look at that and anticipate that it could contain jewelry, a gift card, a very small pocket square, um, you know, yeah, an IOU. Cool. Uh, all those things could sparkle up in anticipation, but maybe maybe I'm like so now, far out of the shopping zone that I don't know. I, it never even occurred to me that you could put a gift card in a jewelry box. I've never thought of. I've never. Well, if I got that from my husband, I would expect it to contain jewelry because he wouldn't get me a gift card. So my anticipation of what it could be in given to me by someone I know nothing about. And I know the only thing I know is I was given that box. I could anticipate a lot of things. Um, but if my husband gave that to me, I know it would contain jewelry. Yeah. So, so there's yeah. an expectation that gets created in yeah. that space. I, I find this very fascinating, this anticipation versus expectation thing. Yeah. It, it's not uh, anticipation is not loaded for me. But expectation is loaded. It, it, it's like, okay, there's a weight to it. There's a bottom to it. Like, hmm, uh-huh. Where they say manage expectations, what do they really mean by that? To me, what, do they mean, what does that mean to you? It hmm? means to manage people's disappointment. Yeah. It has that heavy connotation to it. It mm -hmm. doesn't have a positive connotation. Oh, manage your expectations. They're going to be great. It's going to yeah. be amazing. No, Right? Yeah. And uh, whereas manage your anticipation has a feeling of lightness to it. Man, man, man oh, I mean, we're going on a trip. Oh, I can't wait to be there. That, you know, it, that you can anticipate that much more than expect that. Is that just because we use a different word when you're anticipating something negative? Do you say, I feel anxious about this event versus I'm anticipating. I, I think when I feel positive, I would use anticipating, but when I don't, I would use something else. Yeah. If it's a yeah. heavy thing, you know, um, like you have to go do something that you're not looking forward to or whatever, then that anxiety comes in. Then I'm, I wouldn't anticipate that. Right. I mean, I know we're splitting hairs, but it really is very different to me. You know, I was just about to say something about us, like going deep on the on the meaning and the nuance of words. And someone who were just jumping in and hearing this conversation might think, what are these esoteric geeks talking about? <laughs> but, and, you know, the nuance between words. But it's so important to understand. Uh, I think that our our biggest goal and challenge in life is to be an effective communicator. Everything that we do our entire lives revolves around communication. And the better you are at it, the more likely it is that your ideas will be heard and you'll get what you want in life, period. That's well, why we talk about the nuance between words. And the more, the more, when you say the more you can get out of life, that's a, that, that's a very big comment yes. because it, it, it includes the more joy, the more connection, the more trust, the more flow, all those things are included in that the more. And they're really, really big. Like I, um, 
we're happy to be talking about Kathy today, so we'll just keep going. Uh, she's not here, uh, so that's all good. Um, she likes to just get things checked off her list. She's a check off the list girl. So if there's a gift to be given to somebody, then she just wants the gift to be given. Just give them the gift, whatever. I'm like, no, we have to set this up. There's a <laughs> way to make this more meaningful, more magnificent, more have more depth to it, more juice to it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking back to uh, my son, uh, who is, you know, pursuing a real estate career and he's really trying hard. And he came to me with a problem. And the problem was it was very, very hard to work multiple jobs to simply pay his rent and also show up for free shifts at Caldwell Banker, where he's supposed to be learning the ropes. He's the youngest broker in Florida, right? So he's like the youngest kid anywhere. Um, and, and he was really, really having a hard time. Total meltdown on the phone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I knew I was going to help him out. One way would have been, son, I got you covered. But instead, the communication was, let me hear, let's talk through this. Let's figure out what is going on here. Let's get to the bottom of it. Well, dad, I learned this and I learned that and things are so hard and I have no idea how anybody makes a living out there working jobs like this. It's the craziest thing ever. And and, and, and so I said, well, well, let's really think about what we're trying to accomplish. Let's have another conversation tomorrow. And I pushed it back to the morning. And, and I said, son, I'm going to help you out, but let's just talk about what's that. And we went through a whole process of dis him discovering for himself. And then when I said to him, I said, son, you know, if I, if someone had not helped me out when I was on my initial journey as an entrepreneur, I would be nowhere today. It is my honor and privilege to help you out. And I still, at this point, there was no number mentioned, no nothing at all, right? Mm -hmm. And and it was a it was not a blurted out kind of a situation at all. It's a let's make this much more magnificent based on the communication. So when I finally said to him, "Son, I'm going to give you X. It'll cover your rent, your utilities, your phone, your everything, so you can focus on your career." Oh, and I'm not going to put a time limit on this. It's just going to show up right before the end of the month so that you can take care of your responsibilities and focus on your dream. And it was like, that moment was so magical, Donna. She's really, Dad, you, 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 just have, you, you, you just have no, no, no idea how much that means to me. You know, this kind of feeling that came mm -hmm. out because it wasn't a, it was carefully planned and thought out. And let's take some time to make the more that you were just talking about really magnificent it does matter words matter a lot yeah sorry i was a bit of a rant but no i love it i love it amen i i agree with all of that and and, and i think maybe for the people who listen into this i would ask all of us to challenge ourselves how can we make our communication better how can we how can we anticipate that something is going to be lovely, not expect it from others so that we're disappointed when we don't get it, right? That, that duality there is very interesting. And then discover in the whole process. Other definitions of discovery include to find out, to learn of the existence of, to reveal, disclose, to uncover, that's the archaic discover, um, I love the reveal part. I love reveal. I think reveal is a really cool word. Mm -hmm. yeah. All those people you were just with, um, I'm so sorry I missed the first one in person. We'll not miss the next one. Uh, but to have that, wow, look, we just co-created a mastermind. Because everybody that show up, showed up was a co-creator. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. And every dialogue that happened, as long as it's not monologues of people waiting to talk, are also acts of co-creation. That dialogic exchange is that beautiful, if we don't expect what's coming out of the other person's mouth, and yet we discover what's coming out of their mouth, then the whole thing is a co-creative process. Yes. One of the things that I really liked about working with our Mastermind members is 
they very easily could see other people's points and stories and anticipate how they could use that in their business. It really was a discovery process for everybody to not only think about what an individual challenge was, but um, it's, it's cool to see a mastermind in action, to see the true mastermind, the concept that you get people together and, and achieve a higher level of thought process because of the, here's a corporate word, synergies that happen between people. Um, but it's true. It happens and you can see it happen. You can see people reach a higher level of understanding or aha because of the richness that happens when someone pours their own life experiences on top of an event or a scenario. It allows for more anticipation, I think, because you have more sense of what those possibilities are. Mm -hmm. uh, anticipation in the way we've been discussing it today. You know? Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I, I'm going to hearken back to um, when Speaking Empire uh, was together with the previous owners. I was the tasked with the uh, formation of a mastermind for mm -hmm. uh, Speaking Empire. And we got together. And it was a bunch of really interesting people. Mitch Russo. I'm, I'm trying, I don't want to talk about the names. doesn't matter. But a bunch of, bunch of cool people that had been around a while. And we decided to spend our first mastermind just kind of filling people in on our story because we were going to get together. It was about 25 people and all of them successful online marketers to one degree or another. Some very, some early stages, but they, they were making a living doing online marketing somehow or coaching or consulting in the online marketing space. And. The biggest takeaway we had was, OMG, why did we not have a camera? Why did we not have a camera to discover that this person was in jail? This person was a drug addict. This person was a corporate person that left the thing. This, the stories, the discoveries that were made about human beings who were entrepreneurs, risk takers, living a little bit on the edge, if you will, were so fascinating. We were just killing ourselves for not having recorded the whole thing. I'm not sure you could have used it. It might have got somebody in trouble. But that that discovery thing in the moment, that's why I was, I was uh, disappointed that I couldn't be there for this first one in person. I was like, oh, man, there's going to be so many cool moments that happen as people get to know each other. And I'm sure you saw that and experienced it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that it's a... Uh... You're right. There is something very, very special about the first time, but I also think that there's something very, very special about every time. So, um, well, next one's September, right? Next one is June. Oh wait, June. Hold on. Where is it in my calendar? Oh yeah, the next one is unfortunately where I'm overseas, but uh, the September one is in my calendar, booked. And I'm probably going to move it to October. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just don't move it to flight club weekend please that's all any other weekend's good i so, love this comment from man without prejudice it happens acoustically with a choir singing each vocal octave creates a phantom tone that no one is singing wow yeah i love that that is really cool yeah yeah. I, I knew that happened with certain tones. Like that's the whole basis of binaural beats is there's one beat in one ear, one beat in another, and it creates a third beat. Um, I, I didn't realize that happened with choirs. That's amazing. So check this out. I went uh, a few weeks ago with Kathy to a, a very interesting program. It was the work of Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. Superimposed with classical music and a choir singing and they were bringing in the mathematics of the music with the mathematics of the architect genius artist etc that was da vinci and it was incredible to see like the way that they were using the images as a harp is playing and they're showing these things you're like wow that dude is a genius and he really is a genius. Like you could see the genius of all that that was. It was, um, there's an example of where I was anticipating something really lovely and I was able to discover it because it was so very new because we had no idea what it was. All it was, mm -hmm. was 
the works of Leonardo da Vinci set to classical music with a choir, 100 people choir. We're like, that sounds amazing. Anticipation, super positive. Discovery, it really was. It was mm -hmm. like, like I almost wanted to go back and see it again the following Saturday, but it was sold out. Like, I feel like I could have gotten even more out the second time because I was so like, whoa, 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 like, like this all over the place. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't yes. feel like I could totally soak it in because it was so woof, rich. Oh, it sounds like a wonderful experience. Yeah. I thought of you when I was there. I was like, oh, Donna <laughs> Fox would love this. I totally did with the art and the music. And I was, I was like, oh, man. This is... So I was thinking about you while we were there. Oh, thank you. Wow. All right. Other thoughts on discovery and anticipation before we wrap this up? Uh, well, I had my own experience of anticipation and discovery this past weekend that that has just sort of bubbled to the surface as we're as we're talking. Uh, one of our favorite restaurants, and and by ours I mean mine and Michelle Galvin's uh, favorite restaurants in Las Vegas is called Haleo. It's a Spanish tapas restaurant. Yep. And we learned that there was at one opened in Orlando. So we uh, made special arrangements to surprise our friend, Melinda Martin. Uh, we were in cahoots with her husband to make it a great surprise to pop up there, meet her, and then go to dinner at Haleo. Mm -hmm. And we are so excited and we were thinking about not only the meeting and seeing our friends who I haven't seen in several months um, or Michelle hadn't seen in several months uh, and anticipating the delicious food. Mm -hmm. And we got to Haleo and we sat down and we had a clue when the waitress came and said, you know, have you ever been here before? And Omar and Melinda said, no. And then Michelle and I said, oh, we've been to the Las Vegas location. She said, well, it's going to be a very different experience from Las Vegas. We're a lot more relaxed here. <laughs> I thought she was referring to the atmosphere. We later learned she was referring to the quality and preparation of the food. It's mm -hmm. like you took um, ingredients created by a master and, and prepared them by a student with student grade materials. So... Wow. Oh, sorry. Little things like there's an endive salad that's beautiful and sweet and delicate at the Vegas restaurant was bitter and unenjoyable at mm. the at the Orlando one. Classic case of lots of positive anticipation and upon discovery, disappointment yeah, or right. expectations were not met. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that because that's that's a that's always a drag. Yeah, Haleo is a beautiful place for sure. Uh, it, it's interesting because do you know the translation of Haleo? I don't think I do. Hassle. Seriously? No, Haleo. <laughs> huh. or, or another, and maybe this is more the, the the interpretation they were going for. It's a cluster. Haleo is a cluster, also. Oh. Cluster. Maybe they were thinking. Maybe. To um, gather well i'm thinking because it's a tapas restaurant mm -hmm. and tapas have that tendency to be chaotic mm -hmm. there's a chaos element so jaleo su jaleo means it's you know it's a cluster it's a, uh, a big bunch of stuff interesting but it's a very interesting title i, I mean I, uh, it's so funny because jaleo is a great restaurant i'm like why do they call it jaleo i don't get it <laughs> Because most people don't know, like me. <laughs> it sounds cool, right? Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Well, I'm sorry that was disappointing. And yeah, it, it, it really highlights what we're talking about, though. These, these, these are very, very real emotions that happen all the time. The anticipation piece, the managing the expectations piece, and the discovery that can go one way or the other. Because the reality is, if we hadn't had the Vegas experience, it probably would have been a fine meal. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So how much time do we spend doing that a lot? I, I would just uh, encourage all of us um, seekers, if you will, to maybe try to spend a little bit more time in joyous anticipation and a little less time in managing negative expectation. 
it's all the use of your imagination. Use it for good. Truly, it, it changes your life to be able to reframe things for the positive. It so does. It's like right. amazing. Let the disappointment be in the future where disappointment belongs. Bring the joy to the present. That's the difference of being a positive person. You experience future joy right now and you push and disappointment into the future where it belongs. Well, I can tell you, I'm delighted to see you so bright and bubbly and joyous. You just seem like a big beaming smile. Happy girl just came back from hanging with great friends, doing some great work. And, uh, and now it's onward and upward. Thank you. Um, uh, on my last trip out, I, I do a drawing every day, a tiny little drawing every single day. So here are some drawings. Nice. And one of them I did on my last trip, I will show it to you, is right here. See that little happy, sad, the drama? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That drawing represents how I feel on every day that I travel where I am anticipating the joy of being with the loved ones that I'm about to see. And I am expecting the sadness of departing my friends until I see them again. You know, I will leave you with this thought. Um, Buddhism teaches us that life is a series of gatherings and partings. Mm -hmm. And I was really pondering that after reading it. And came to the thought that, yes, that's very true. And therefore, the quality of our life is largely dependent on the quality of our gatherings and our partings. And the more attention that we can spend on both, not just the gathering, but also the parting, the better the quality of our life. And... Um, I really try to abide by that because in my youth, when I had when when we lived in Europe and I was far away from my dad, we only saw him in the summers and every other Christmas. And I have the memory of my dad saying, I gotta go, I gotta go, and just breaking down crying almost every time we mm -hmm. separated. And it was just such a drag. And so we made it a thing after a while. When we finally got hip to the idea that this was not cool at all, this was not. It was not a great way to have a parting to it was i'll see you soon we'll see you again and then quickly we we we, we it wasn't a massive upgrade to the quality of the parting frankly <laughs> it was a less horrible uh, whatever but as i pondered this over time now i really try to pay attention to how i'm parting from someone mm. to keep that beautiful energy that beautiful thing that beautiful thought that that maybe maybe oftentimes the parting has with it a dose of anticipation of the next gathering as opposed to the sadness of the parting itself in fact that's exactly what i do and i didn't realize that's what i was doing i try to focus on the anticipation of the next gathering as opposed to the sadness of the parting so to speak I recently fixed one of my own personal processes um, that was causing too much of the sadness of the parting. My husband no longer drives me to the airport. He picks me up from the airport, but he doesn't drive me because I realized that that 40 minutes that we spent in the car together was pure torture to my heart. Mm. Like ripping off a bandaid slowly, just mm. driving closer and closer to the moment I'd have to say goodbye, even though, I was going, and and Ridgely, no lie, as soon as I'm in the airport, I'm excited about where I'm going. Mm -hmm. But that 40 minutes was torturous. So now it happens wow. very, very quickly at home. I get in an Uber and I go to the airport. And I have a much more enjoyable you know, trip to the airport. That's a process solution to an emotional problem. Yeah, good yeah. for you. Good for you. I think that's great that you figured that out. Worth every penny of the $50 Uber trip to not feel the heartbreak. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Wow. Very good. I love that. Yeah. So if you find yourself stuck in the expectation loop, figure out how you can manage your own. Yeah. Maybe move it over to the anticipation space.
Yep. Anticipation. Anticipation. Sorry. Carly Simon, that. right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, my dear. Well, thank you so much for the time. As always, I so enjoy these things. I think I better go take a shower now before my wife comes home and smells my sweaty self from running all over Pensacola trying to salvage this birthday and make it amazing. <laughs> well, that is not a birthday present. So, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all I can't right. wait till the next one next month. Agreed. Much love to you and everyone who's listening. Uh, so glad that you've spent the time with us. As always, it's just our honor and privilege to be with you for every minute we get to be. So Well said. Thank you. With that, let's have our favorite Groovezilla play us out for the month. Yeah. <laughs>